welcome to Left Foot Media, my name is Brendan Malone. Now before I go any further with today's video, if you are a fluent speaker of German, and I know that there are some of you out there who watch my channel, then please, 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 you're going to have to forgive me because today it is almost certain in this video that I am going to end up butchering the pronunciation of certain German words. Obviously because I don't speak fluent German, and because I'm going to be speaking about the 2004 Oliver Hirschspiegel film, Downfall. The greatest German movie that's ever been made, one of the best war films that has ever been made. In fact, I think it is one of the best movies that has ever been made. There are lots of reasons why I think this about Downfall. If you don't own a copy of Downfall and you collect movies, you really should have this movie in your collection. It should be in your top 10. If you haven't seen Downfall, you need to watch Downfall ASAP. It still holds up to the test of time uh, 14 years later. This is still a great film. It is a near perfect cinematic experience. And there are several reasons for this. First of all, it covers the final 10 days of the Nazi regime, the downfall of Nazi Germany, those final 10 days when it is all collapsing in on itself. Despite that fact, though, it doesn't treat the Nazis as simplistic, one-dimensional sort of mustachio-twirling villains. And often that is what a lot of other war films have tended to do. Instead, what this tries to do is it tries to give you the nuance and show you more about these characters. And in many ways, the fact that they make them real people and the, the fact that they make them more than just one-dimensional evil monsters, you, you sort of realize how horrific, and, and I guess it becomes even more frightening, how evil the Nazi ideology was. Because what it shows you is that even seemingly good people, even seemingly upright, intelligent, and responsible people, and the German society was the most intelligent society of its time, can very easily be swayed into doing monstrous things if they become captured by evil ideologies. And that's what this film does so well, and I think that's what adds to the just the, the horror, the tragedy, the, the frightening nature of what Nazism was in these events that are portrayed on screen. Secondly, this is probably some of the best acting that you will see in any film. It's not just one performance either. Every actor in this movie brings their A-game. There's not a single actor who brings a subpar performance to this film. And it makes a huge difference. It, it, it feels so real. There's, there's not a single moment where an actor does or says things that draw you out of the movie. There's, there's not a moment where you go, oh, 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 I'm cringing at that. It's just everything about it you are drawn into the believability and you really need to be because it's such an immersive film. And this is one of the ways this happens. The acting, there's not a single subpar acting performance uh, throughout this entire film, which is pretty amazing considering that this film is almost three hours in length. There is an acting performance in this movie, I think, to end all acting performances. One of the greatest acting performances uh, in cinematic history and also, I would say, probably one of the most difficult acting performances to pull off. And that was Bruno Gantz, who plays Adolf Hitler. Now, here's the interesting thing. Bruno Gantz is not a German actor. He is a Swiss actor. And yet, you believe that this guy is Adolf Hitler. His performance and portrayal of Hitler really sets the bar. He sets the standard. I don't know if anyone else is ever going to beat... Bruno Gantz's portrayal of Hitler in Downfall. It is just an experience that leaves you, uh, I guess in many ways, you're so immersed into who Hitler is. You really feel like you're watching Hitler. It's clear that Bruno Gantz has actually studied the character of Hitler and tried to understand him, and he has adopted so many of the essential mannerisms about who Hitler actually was, that it is it's pretty frightening. It's like watching the real Adolf Hitler. It's almost like watching him in a documentary as if someone had actually filmed this stuff. And that's what I think makes it so frightening. And it is a phenomenal performance. And as I said, I don't think it'll ever be topped. And I, I think what makes other performances of Hitler uh, nowhere near this one is because basically they I think they're sort of more caricatures of evil. They're more caricatures of what 
uh, Hitler is portrayed to be rather than who Hitler actually was. And I think there's reasons for this. Number one, because Hitler was the guy who oversaw some of the most monstrous uh, genocide that we've seen in the last hundred years or so of human history. And so it's very easy to focus in on the grave and very serious and monstrous evil and forget about all of the other things that actually make up who Hitler was. Secondly, I think a lot of actors, as a result of the fact that Hitler was one of the most evil and brutal dictators that we've known in the last hundred years, a lot of actors probably don't really want to try and understand or give themselves to this character. I mean, I, I get that. It's pretty daunting to, to even be playing Hitler, let alone be committing yourself to, so totally to understanding this character and taking on that character. And so I think those two things combined have resulted in most performances of Hitler just not really being particularly immersive, not being as authentic as they could be. And this one, the portrayal of Hitler is just so authentic that, again, it adds to the monstrous nature of what this actually was, what Nazism was. Because you realize here is a man who could have chosen very, very differently. Here is a man who definitely did not and was not predestined to espouse these evil ideologies and perpetrate and oversee these evil acts. He was a man who had choices and he was a man who could have done other things. And that's what adds to the gravity of the evil. I know one of the complaints around the time the film was released was that some people said, oh, that, uh, you know, Oliver Hirschbiegel, you've, you've basically humanized Hitler too much and he should be portrayed as a monster. But as Hirschbiegel said, the, the, the point is that if uh, Hitler is just a monster and nothing more, you know, glowing red eyes and fangs and big horns, then we don't actually recognize the danger that Nazism was and we are in danger ourselves of falling prey to similar sorts of ideologies, monstrous and brutal and barbaric ideologies in future, because we are incapable of recognizing the fact that ordinary looking people and people who are convincing and seemingly rational and who seemingly are good leaders can actually lead you into very, very dangerous and evil places as a society. And so to understand that, you need to understand that, that the monstrous ideologies are often perpetrated by people who look and, and feel as if you should be following them. And I think that, that Bruno Gantz's performance here is, is just really brings that home. As I said, I don't know if it'll ever be topped, and it's one of the reasons why this film is so good. It's one of the best acting performances that anyone has ever brought to cinema. The camera work and the aesthetic visuals are just... Uh, it's just amazing. The, the, this At times, this feels like a documentary. A lot of war films... They feel like you are watching a portrayal of those events. Even the good war films, you are still sort of observing the events in the way that you would observe uh, perhaps a stage play or something that is cinematic. But in this film, you actually are so immersed in these events because of the aesthetics and the camera work that you really feel like you are there. And that's what I think it brings home the frightening reality of this thing. You actually, at times, you feel like you are an observer. You are present observing what is happening. And it's, it should be that way because this is an observer's tale. This is uh, really about uh, Tradel Junger and her, her memoirs and, and you know Hitler's secretary. And she is the observer in this bunker. But we really feel like we are playing and taking on her role in this whole story because of the way this film is shot, the use of, of, of certain camera angles to really give you a sense of, of what the bunker was and to, and to really be immersed in that world, the use of, of handheld and, and point of view, sort of first person point of view camera work that really just pulls you into being the observer. Like I said, at times this feels like a documentary. It doesn't feel like you're watching a film at all. And, and again, that adds to the frightening nature of this. It just... It feels so visceral. It's so real. At times you feel like you should be able to smell the blood or to smell the alcohol or to smell the gunpowder in the air. That's how immersive this experience is. And that's all down to the visuals and the, the direction and, and the camera work and the cinematography that is involved in this movie. And lastly, this is a film that is actually very small in its sort of scope, but 
at no point do you ever lose that important sense of how large and how important and how big the stakes are and how large this whole conflict really was. So what I mean by the fact that this is small in nature is that this film, apart from one or two minor scenes here or there, the entire film takes place in or around or very close to Hitler's bunker. It's a very small and confined space. It's a, a very small and confined location in general when you're talking about the film overall. But obviously this is about events that go well beyond that small space. Now one of the dangers is this film could have just felt like a almost a very character-driven sort of claustrophobia type film where it's about certain characters and their realities unfolding in this small space. But it doesn't feel like that at all because of the way this film has been written, the way this film is shot, and, and lots of things that play out in front of us uh, in the film, you get the sense of not just what's happening in that bunker and the madness of it, but you also get the gravity and the realisation of how big the war actually is and the fact that it's more than just what's going on in this bunker. And you get the sense of the stakes and what's really at stake here. And you really feel the stakes in this film. And you get the sense of the fact that it's not just this small group of people, it's so many more people. In fact, there are so many great moments which are really like visual metaphors for the whole of the Nazi ideology and the whole of Germany and the whole of the war and what this means and, and what it might mean for the future. It's a very, very, very well told film about some profoundly important events. This is a movie, like I said, if you haven't seen this, you really need to watch Downfall. One interesting piece of trivia from this film, it's just, you know, I guess a secondary piece of trivia because I like my movie trivia as well, is that there is, a, 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 during the process of this film, there are various times we, we are shown uh, interview footage with uh, the real Traudl Junger. And, and Traudl Junger is the, the secretary to Hitler whose memoirs this film, of one of the, she's one of the sources this film is based on. And there's interview footage with her talking about her story. And initially in the some of the interview footage, she sort of says, well, I was young and we just sort of had to go along with it. But then later, in a later piece of footage, she actually changes her tune. And she talks about the moment she walked past the memorial that was set up for Sophie Scholl. Now, Sophie Scholl was another German girl. Sophie Scholl uh, was executed by the Nazis after she and her brother Hans and several other people formed the first peaceful, overt, anti-Nazi resistance in Germany. It was a group called the White Rose. And Sophie Scholl, along with her brother Hans and several others, were executed by the Nazis. And... Uh, Traudl Junger talks about the fact that she walked past the memorial one day and she realized that Sophie Scholl was the same age as she was and that Sophie Scholl was executed the very same year that she started working for Hitler. And she says, I realized I could have actually made a different choice. I didn't have to be bound to the Nazis. I, I did have moral freedom, but I just chose to go along with this. And it's quite a powerful moment uh, of personal admission and personal fault that she's admitting to on her part here around moral cowardice. The interesting piece of trivia is that about a year later, in 2005, there was a movie that was released, one of another excellent German film. It's probably my second favorite German film of all time. And it was called Sophie Scholl, The Final Days. And it is all about Sophie Scholl and her final days. Now, the interesting thing is that the actress who plays Sophie Scholl in that 2005 film is also in Downfall. She has a minor part in the movie Downfall. And there's this interesting connection between the real life uh, Traudl uh, Junger and, and Sophie Scholl and, and the actors who, and actresses who are involved in, in playing these characters on screen. As per usual, I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please let me know in the comments section. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Have you seen the film? What do you think about Downfall? If you like the content I'm making and you'd like to see more of it, then please support me on Patreon. There is a link in the description below, and there'll be a link on screen at the end of this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Left Foot Media.